Hey, and welcome back to another lab walkthrough. In this one, we're going to take a look at how to enumerate the AWS Secrets Manager service in order to better understand how the service works, but also to figure out how to access secrets that are stored in an AWS account. Now this lab only takes about one minute to launch. It's super fast. So I'll go ahead and launch it now while I explain what we're going to do. This is a completely free lab that anyone watching this can launch and all you need is a free cyber account. No credit card or payment is required at all. Also, I have timestamps in the description below if you'd like to skip the instruction and just go straight into the lab. Now I created this lab because extracting secrets from the Secrets Manager service is an important part of our IAM Provest course where you learn how to escalate your IAM privileges in AWS in order to either exfiltrate sensitive S3 data or extract secrets that are stored in the account. And so that way, if you're not already familiar with the process of enumeration in AWS, or if you're not familiar with Secrets Manager itself, then this gives you an easy to follow walkthrough. And this is a service that organizations can use to store their secrets, which makes it a very juicy target for attackers. And as security professionals, it's our job to find potential weaknesses in our organization's environments so that we can fix them before the threat actors find them. So on that note, and as a disclaimer, this video is meant for educational purposes only. All right, so now that our lab has launched, we're given an access key ID as well as a secret access key. If you don't already have the AWS CLI installed and configured on your machine, then you'll want to go ahead and do that. You can just look it up in the AWS documentation. It's very easy and simple, but if you have any issues, let me know. Once you do that, you can type in AWS configure, and I didn't mean to do that. Go ahead and press enter with just AWS configure, and then you can click on here to copy that value and then click on that one to copy the secret access key. Then for the default region name, I highly recommend using US East one for our labs because most of the labs are going to be running in that region. And then for the default output format, I like to use JSON. So you can type that in if you want, or you can just leave the default and just press enter. It's completely up to you. And so once you have your AWS access keys all set up, it's time to enumerate. Now, because IAM controls a lot in AWS, when it comes to access control, for us to know whether to, or whether we can even enumerate Secrets Manager or not, we need to understand what policies we have, either for our current user or our current role, depending on what you have access to, which in this case is going to be a lab user. And we can find that out by typing in a very common command that both security professionals, but also attackers will use, which is STS get caller identity. And the reason we do that is to just know what's going on and who we're authenticated as. Because here you can see the user ID, the account ID, this is the AWS account ID, and then the Amazon resource name, which is a unique identifier. And in this case, this tells us that we are authenticated as a user. And this is the name of the user. You will need all this information, but really for practical purposes, I'll just call this user Julie. So let me go ahead and copy this while it's right here. So now that we have this information, we know that we're a user, we can start by listing out Julie's different policies to see what we have access to. And one way we can do that is by typing AWS IAM list user policies. And this autocomplete is really nice, by the way. I use something called fig.io. If you're interested in getting autocomplete, it's super helpful when doing labs like these or day-to-day -day operations, really. And then I'll go ahead and paste in the username that I just copied and this will return a policy name. You could have multiple policy names if you have multiple policies attached to your user. And in this case, we only have one, but it's still returned as a JSON array. We're going to need this information just like we're going to need the username. So I'm gonna skip this step because I already know what's going on with this lab since I made it, but I would recommend just starting to document this information in whatever note-taking application you use because you're going to need that information over and over again in these sorts of labs. So now let's go ahead and retrieve this user policy so that we can see what it gives us permissions to. So we'll again, pass in the username and I'll copy that from here just in case I don't have it copied anymore. And then we'll do policy name and same thing. Uh, we'll grab this information from here and press enter. And so here we can see exactly what this policy permits, which of course is several actions, but let's focus on the secret manager actions. And by the way, 
when you see something like this, if you're not familiar, that means that you're able to scroll. So you can scroll up and down with your arrow keys on the keyboard to go all the way down. Or, and once you reach end, you can type Q on your keyboard in order to exit the scroll mode and keep the output, which is very practical. Again, like I said, we're gonna focus on the Secrets Manager stuff. So I'm gonna ignore this right here. This is I am actions. Here we have Secrets Manager, get secret value, list secret version IDs, get resource policy, describe secrets for these two resources right here. And then we have secret manager list secrets for all resources. So no resource restriction for listing secrets. This is important information because it tells us a couple things. First, it tells us that we probably have at least two secrets in this AWS account, and we have access to perform these actions across both of those resources. So that tells us we have access to Secrets Manager, at least in some part. Now to keep this lab focused, I'm not going to try and enumerate any more policies like manage policies or group policies, because I know that there aren't any since I made this lab. But again, this is really focused on Secrets Manager. We will have a separate video that talks about performing further IAM enumeration. But now that we have this information, we need to familiarize ourselves with the Secrets Manager CLI. I've got it pulled up right here, but you can quickly Google AWS Secrets Manager CLI and find this information. Make sure you're on version two because there's a version one that dominates in Google right now. Uh, and you don't want to be looking at that one since it's got a few differences. As we can see, the Secrets Manager CLI is not very big. There's not that many commands compared to something like EC2 or IAM. This is a much more focused service, but you still have quite a few. And so we can pare this down. All we're really talking about today is enumerating, which means we're looking at data, we're listing or getting data. So we can cut out all of these other commands like batch or cancel or create or delete. We're not doing any of that. Instead, we're gonna be interested in describe secrets. We, I'm gonna skip this one because it's also not relevant. We could look at get resource policy, get secret value, these two list options here. And then I'm pretty sure that's it. Yeah, it looks like that's basically it. By the way, I've also narrowed it down and pared it down in this little cheat sheet right here in the course. Again, this is free. Anybody can access it that's watching this. And so as you can see, I've pared it down quite a bit and added some extra documentation information that will help you on your enumeration journey. So feel free to refer to that or refer to the official AWS documentation. Uh, honestly, it's, it's totally up to you and whatever you prefer. But to get started, what we could do is we could attempt to list out all the secrets. And we can do that by using this list secrets command which if we click on that will tell us exactly how to use it. It's pretty straightforward in this case. We're gonna do AWS Secrets Manager, and then we're gonna do List Secrets. And I keep doing that because of course, as soon as I start recording, I forget how to type. And so we're gonna pass that in. And again, we're gonna be in scroll mode because we've got a couple secrets. The list starts up here. We've got the first secret right here. And then we've got the second one here, which we know because we have two separate ARNs which are the Amazon resource names. So let me scroll all the way down and then I'm gonna go ahead and exit so that we can take a look at this. What really matters in this output is going to be, again, the ARN, the name, which acts as the ID, the secret ID. And then we have a description. Uh, we don't really care about this or any of these tags. And this is relatively important, but we'll take a look at that again in just a second. So we have this uh, secret right here, and we have this secret right here. Again, document this information because we'll come back to that in just a second. So now that we know that there are two secrets and we have access to both of those secrets, it's time for us to try and enumerate a little bit more information about each of these secrets. I mentioned versions. And so one of the commands for versions is going to be, if we go to the secrets manager here, we can search for version. Actually, I think it's, yeah, it's right here. So list secret version IDs. So I could do list secret version IDs. And it will tell me that I need to pass in a secret ID, which I can verify by clicking through the documentation or referring to this cheat sheet over here, list secret IDs and secret ID of value. Okay, perfect. So we know that's what we're going to need. I can start off by passing in this name here. 
And then I could do the same thing with the other secret, but I'll skip that step just to save some time because as we can see here, there's only one version associated with the secret. So it's somewhat helpful and interesting to know, but not super, super relevant to what we're doing today. So the next thing that I would want to do instead of listing secret I version ID information for the other secret is I could try to fetch the resource policy for these secrets. We looked at our user policy, but secrets in Secret Manager can also have resource-based policies as a separate layer of security. And those resource policies could prevent us from accessing it, even though our user has access through her, his or her policy. So the way that we can do that is we can type in Secret Manager and then get resource policy, which again, we would see right here, get resource policy and right here as well, which this tells us that we can pass in a secret ID. So I'll keep referencing this going forward since it helps us trim out some of the noise. So we'll do secret ID. And again, we're gonna pass in the same name that I did earlier. And my autocomplete even gives me the information, which is really nice. So we'll start with the first one, which is the API key. And then we'll do the second one, which is apparently a password as, as the name seems to imply here we can see that we're getting empty results, essentially. We're getting the ARN and the name, but there's nothing else, which tells us that neither of these secrets have a resource-based policies because they're optional in Secrets Manager, but they're usually recommended as an extra layer of security. But since they're optional and they're not set here, then we know that we have access through Julie's permissions in order to retrieve our password information. Now, there are two separate commands that seem to do the same thing. The first one is describe secret, and the second, second one is get secret value. What's tricky here is describe secret doesn't actually provide the secret value. It only gives you information about the secret. Let me show you what I mean. If we type secret manager and then describe secret, and we'll pass in a secret ID. Let's just do the first one, for example. We'll see that we have the ARN, name, description, tags, et cetera, et cetera but it doesn't give us the actual, what is it, API key here? It doesn't actually give us the actual API key. So not super helpful if we're trying to get the, the password or, or secret that's stored in here, right? So instead, what we need to use is get secret value, which is what I'll do now. We'll do secrets manager, get secret value. Again, you wanna specify the secret ID. And then I'll start with the second one actually, because that one I believe is decoded. And uh, as a side note, as a sidebar here, if you see these brackets, that means these are optional values or options. So if you had multiple version IDs, you could try to specify another version ID in order to list what that secret value was. Or you could do the prior one, the, the prior version stage. We don't need to do that because we know there's only one version for these. So let me go ahead and press enter and we'll get the current value which is going to be a password value of Cyber Labs are super fun 2020 or 222, excuse me, 2211. I don't know my numbers. Uh, and so this is the, the password. And if this were a CTF, then this would be your flag right here. Okay, so we got secret number one. Let's look at secret number two, which was the first one. I reversed it in this case because this one is encoded. We have a secret API key. And then we have this value right here. So what do I do with that? We're not gonna talk about encoding. That's a major topic for another conversation. So I'll keep this brief and simple. This is a very simple base 64 encoding, just to add a little bit of extra fun. And you can use a free online tool like this one, base64decode.org. You can paste the value in here and you can press decode and the result will be down here. I'm not going to actually do it just because that way it gives you something to do on your own, but you should see the actual plain text decoded value as soon as you, you do that. And I'll let you discover what that is on your own time. But et voila, this is it. We have successfully enumerated information and extracted secrets that are stored in this account's secrets manager service. Feel free to keep playing around with this lab environment if you'd like, see what's possible, see where you're getting access denied because there's a lot of restrictions on this lab. Just kind of get a feel for how it works. And then also feel free to check out our YouTube channel because we're gonna have more content like this, including some of the CTFs 
that you will see in this course right here. But this first section is gonna be full of free labs. We're adding at least another one for S3 very soon, and maybe another one, we'll see. But these other labs are going to be CTFs, where you get to apply what you're learning with uh, learning about enumeration here for Secrets Manager, for IAM, for S3, things like that. So you're gonna use that information in order to capture these flags. They also have solutions. And at the very end, we have challenges that do not have solutions. So you get to really put your, your new skills to the test and just have as much fun with it as you can. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment below. Those really help in giving me feedback, but also with the algorithm. Same thing with liking the video, please drop me a like and also subscribe and check us out on Discord at cyber.com slash Discord. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time.